Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maham and I crochet cute things. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet three different pieces that are originally based off of my love letter book sleeve. We're going to start off by making a cute little crochet envelope that you can use to gift some greeting cards in for your valentine and the cool thing about it is that your valentine can later use it as like a wallet or a card holder and you can make this any size. As always, my patterns are super customizable so you can make the size anything you want it to be. And I'm going to be using titch buttons for this and you can find these in any craft store. Next, I've got a redesigned love letter book sleeve. This is made out of a really big granny square and it's super easy to make, super repetitive. It's really fun to do. So if you want to watch a show while crocheting, then this project is really good for that because it just repeats again and again and again. And then lastly, we've got my favorite, the love letter bag. So this is very similar to my original love letter book sleeve. The only difference is that I show you how to attach the straps on the side and how to adjust the pattern a little bit to get more of that bag shape rather than like a book sleeve shape. One more thing before you head on to the tutorial, I recently started vlogging on TikTok. They're more of like get ready with me so I'll update you on my life and what crochet projects I'm working on. I'm hoping to grow the community even further with those vlogs so head on over there if you're interested in watching them. Also, do you guys have a valentine yet? If you don't have a valentine or if you're feeling like you're going to be really lonely this valentine's day, I would love to be your valentine. Let's be each other's valentine this year. So let me know what your plans are for Valentine's Day and I will see you in my next video. Let me know what piece you're planning on making in the comments and I love you, bye! If you've followed any of my tutorials, then you're probably already familiar with this heart. It's my favorite way to make a heart and it takes under two minutes. We're gonna start off by making a magic ring and don't worry, I'll show you exactly how to do that. You're gonna wrap your yarn around your fingers like this, making sort of like an X shape over here. Then you're gonna take your hook and you're gonna slide it under grab the yarn and twist it up but don't let it go make sure you're holding on to it grab this end over here and pull it through and that is your chain one like that now let your fingers go and you should have a circle like this now this is how i like to hold my magic ring so like that now you're just going to chain one more so that's a total of two chains and now we're going to be inserting three triple crochets inside the magic ring to triple crochet you yarn over two times, insert your hook into the magic ring, make sure you're getting both those loops, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. And that is your triple crochet. So we're gonna do two more triple crochets, making a total of three inside the magic ring. Once you've got your chain two and three triple crochets, we're going to be inserting three double crochets. To double crochet, you yarn over once, go inside the ring, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. I'm gonna do two more double crochets. Now we're done with one side of the heart. Now we have to make the pointy part. So to do that, you're gonna chain one, then you're gonna insert just one triple crochet into the ring and then you're going to chain one again. And now we're gonna be doing the other side of the heart. So we're gonna start by three double crochets. And you can tighten this a little bit. So one, two, and three. And as you go along, you can always tighten the ring like this so you have, so you have more control over your ring. Now we're gonna insert three triple crochets and we're almost done with our heart. Once you're done, you're going to chain two. And then you're going to go into the magic ring and you're going to slip stitch. So to slip stitch, you're going to bring up a loop and then you're going to slide that same loop through the one on your hook. And that is your slip stitch. Now you can take the end of your magic ring and just tighten it. To end the heart, I'm just going to chain two and fasten off. So I'm going to chain one, two, I'm going to get my scissor. Then I'm just going to cut, pull, turn it to the back and tighten it backwards so you get that nice little point 
for your heart. Please remember to make all of your stitches tight to get the perfect shape for the heart. For the love letter envelope, you're going to need the card or the piece of paper that you're going to be putting inside the envelope. This is just going to help you work out the measurements. So I would recommend that you decide on that first. And then we're going to start by making a slip knot. I'm using the same 4.5 millimeter hook and 100% acrylic yarn for this envelope. And now you're going to be chaining the length that you want. So start by chaining and make the chain as long as it needs to, to go to be as big as the card. Once it's slightly bigger than your card, because we're going to be joining the sides together, so make one extra chain. And then you're going to skip the first chain and you're going to be single crocheting into the second chain from your hook. So go into the second chain from your hook and single crochet. And of course you can use any stitch you like. I like using single crochets because they give me a very neat and tight finish. And now you're just going to go in every single chain and single crochet into each one. It's completely normal for your work to curl like this. It's going to stop curling once you've done a few more rows, so it's completely normal. Please don't be worried. To start a new row, you're going to be chaining one. So chain one and turn your work to the other side. And now you're going to be inserting one single crochet in each stitch, but not the chain one. So starting from over here, you're going to insert your hook into the stitch and you're just going to single crochet and that is how you're going to be starting every new row and then you're just going to go into every stitch and insert one single crochet and you're going to keep doing rows until this piece is twice as big as your card now i'm just single crocheting into the last stitch of the row and then once again to start a new row you're going to chain one turn your work Skip the first chain and start single crocheting from your very first stitch. So this is what I mean when I say that you have to make your piece twice as big as the size you want. This is the size that I want and I have to make my piece big enough to wrap around my card like this. Make sure it's not very loose or peeking out. Just make sure it's nice and comfortable like that. Once you're done, I would recommend that you do two extra rows um, just to make allowance for when you fold it or when you attach things on it or when you make the triangle flap thing. So I would recommend doing at least just two more rows or maybe just one more extra row on top of the rows that you already did in the same exact way. And you can take a bobby pin and you can just mark the row that is the size that you want. And then you can continue doing extra, two extra rows. So once I've done my two extra rows, so those are my two rows on top of the size that I already had, it just helps me wrap it on my envelope without creating like dents on the side. Now for the triangle flap, it's going to be very simple. The only difference is we're going to be adding a decrease on each side. So there's going to be a decrease here and then one single crochet in each stitch, and then a decrease here. So the first two stitches and the last two stitches of every row will have a decrease on them. So I'm going to start by chaining one and then turning my work. And the way that I like to do a decrease is to skip that first stitch and work into the second stitch, basically decreasing the number of stitches. So making sure it's very tight, I'm just gonna skip this and I'm gonna go into the next one. And I'm just gonna single crochet like normal. And can you see that how it pulls it in? So that's kind of what a decrease is. And now I'm going to be single crocheting one in each stitch until I have two stitches left. I've got two stitches left and I'm going to skip this one and single crochet into the other one making a decrease. So just making sure everything's nice and tight. I'm just gonna go into that and single crochet making a decrease or pulling it together. Then I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and then do the next row in the same exact way. I'm going to skip the first stitch and work into the second one. So at the start of every row, you make, an, make a decrease, and at the end of every row, you make a decrease. And in between, you just insert one single crochet in each stitch. 
until you have two stitches left at the end, which you decrease. As you're crocheting, you're going to notice that the number of stitches in each row starts getting smaller and smaller because you decrease by two in each row. So you're going to stop doing rows or reach the pointy part of your envelope once you have only two stitches left. I just finished a row and now I have only two stitches left. So I'm going to start the next row just by chaining one. And then I'm going to skip this, go into the second one. And I'm going to make my very last single crochet. And this is basically the pointy part of your envelope flap like that. And now we can fasten our work off. To fasten off, you just chain two, one, two, and then you get your scissor and you cut. And then you pull and tighten. This is what all of your piece should look like. And then you're going to take the card or whatever you're using and you're just gonna wrap it. And now we're gonna be joining the sides together. So it's gonna help if you attach the sides together with bobby pins first to mark the place where you're going to be sewing it together. So that was my last stitch of the row, so I'm just gonna connect these two together with the bobby pin. You're going to insert your hook into the very corner of your envelope. So just on the side, wherever you can insert your hook, it's gonna be a bit tricky. I'm just gonna do it there, through both the sides like this. And then you're going to get the yarn that you were using. You can use a different color for a contrasting edge. And then you're gonna make a little loop with it and just slide it through like that. And then just holding on to this, you're gonna chain one and then you can tuck this in. And now you're going to be inserting your hook through one piece and then through the other piece as well. And then you're going to be slip stitching it together. So that is how you slip stitch. And you're just going to do this until you reach the top. And then we're going to fasten off and we're going to repeat on the other side as well. So I'm done slip stitching all the way to the top. And then you're just going to fasten off by chaining two. And then you cut, pull, tighten. And now you're going to repeat this on the other side as well. So as you can see, that side is joined together. To repeat this on the other side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be attaching my hook starting from the top instead of the bottom because I want this edge on the top side rather than the bottom side. So same steps, you're just going to make a little loop, you're going to slide it through, chain one, and then you're just going to slip stitch to join the pieces together. Once you're done, same steps as before, you're going to chain two, get your scissors and cut. This is what your piece should look like and then you fold it and now we're going to be adding a heart over here. So follow the steps for the heart. To attach your heart pieces, you're going to just grab on to the ends over here. You can also sew these on but I don't like sewing. So what I do is I just grab on to the pieces and I slide it through my other piece like that and that just attaches the heart like onto the piece and then I do the same thing with the other end so I make sure to leave a bit of ends and then I just tighten it and you can see that my heart just attaches by itself and I use this technique for all of the projects in this video. Once I'm happy with the placement I'm just gonna tie a knot to secure it in place and that is how I attach my pieces. It's no sewing required. Just make sure that you leave your ends big enough, long enough to do this. Next I'm going to show you how to sew these titch buttons on. They're called titch buttons. You can find them at any craft store. They have one flat side and then one pointy side and I'm going to be using these to basically open and close my pieces. So you're going to take the flat side, the one that looks like this, and you can put it at the bottom, and then the pointy side, the one that looks like that, at the top. So I'm not going to show you how I sew it on completely, but it's basically you just go through these holes on the side. Um, <laughs> my needle's stuck. But from the back, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to insert my needle through these little holes over here. 
and I'm gonna pull I'm gonna go through the next hole just like securing it in place and I'm gonna pull and I'm just gonna do this a few times so I go over the same place a bunch of times to make it extra secure so I'm going through that same hole that I went through the first time making it really tight oops Okay, don't forget to double knot. And there is your finished envelope with a titch button that can snap on and off so that the person you give this to can reuse it as a wallet or something else after taking out the greeting card. For the book sleeve, we're going to be making a really big granny square and then we're going to be folding it into an envelope shape. So to start off with the granny square, we're going to be making a magic ring. And if this is something that you struggle with, please don't worry, we'll do it slowly together. So you're going to start by holding onto your yarn and wrapping it around your fingers like this, making sort of like an X shape over here. And then you're going to insert your hook, grab onto the yarn, and twist. So look at how I'm holding onto the yarn over there. And then I'm going to grab onto this with my hook, and I'm going to slide it through that little loop on my hook over there. And then you're going to let it go, and you're going to have your magic ring in the middle. Now we have our first chain over there. We have to do a total of three chains, so I'm going to chain two more. And now we're going to be inserting two double crochets inside the magic ring. So to make a double crochet, you yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. The chain three counts as your first double crochet, so technically we have three double crochets, and I'm going to refer to three double crochets together as a cluster. So every time I say cluster, I mean three double crochets. Now we're going to chain two, and we're going to insert another cluster inside the magic ring, which is which means that we're going to insert another three double crochets inside the magic ring. One, two, and three. Once you're done with your cluster, you're going to chain two. Now we're going to insert another cluster. So three more double crochets. And when you're done, you're going to chain two again. Now we're going to insert our last cluster. Make sure that you are working over this end over here. And if it gets hard to work with, you can always pull it to make it a little bit tighter. And that completes our round one. I'm just going to pull this to close up the magic ring a little bit. And now we're going to chain two. And we're going to end the round by slip stitching at the top of the chain three. So that's your chain one, that's your chain two, and at the top should be your chain three. So you're just going to go into it and you're going to slip stitch like that. And that is the starting of your granny square. Now we're going to start each round. So whatever round it is, whether it's round four, round five, round six, you're always going to start your round by chaining three. And then you're going to turn your work. Now I like turning my work after each round because it gives me a less wonky granny square, if that makes sense. It helps keep my granny square neater but there are many different ways to do this basic granny square and if you like to follow another way that's completely fine but this is how I do it. Once I'm done with my three chains this counts as our first double crochet so in this hole over here I have to insert two more to make a cluster. So insert two more crochets over there. Before we go any further I want to explain how this granny square works. So basically you have the corners of the square, which are these corners over here. In each corner, you're going to be following the same pattern. So whenever you get to a corner of the square, you're going to insert a cluster, chain two, insert another cluster in that same space over here. So because this is a corner, we have to insert two clusters. I'm just gonna push this to the side, chain two, insert another cluster in the same space and this will start to make more sense as we do more rounds together. Once you're done with that you're gonna see that in the next round of your granny square you have your corner so it's gonna get bigger. Now we have to work into the next space over here and before working into the next space always chain one. 
Now, because this is a corner, we're going to insert a cluster, chain two, and then insert another cluster. So I finished my cluster, now I'm going to chain two and insert another cluster in that same space to make a corner. Once you're done with the corner, you need to work in the next space. And before doing that, you always have to chain one. Now we're going to make another corner. So cluster, chain two, and then another cluster. And this running square works up pretty fast because it follows a really easy repetitive pattern. You just have to be careful about keeping track of your corners and making sure that you're doing three double crochets each time. So there is my other corner. I've got three corners so far. We've got one more corner left. But before we do that, we have to chain one. And now let's do our next corner. So cluster, chain two, and then another cluster. I know it can be really annoying when people speed up their videos, but because there are lots of projects in one video, I have to make sure that I manage my time well. Once you're done, you're going to chain one because we have to end this round. Whenever we want to end a round, we have to slip stitch into the top of our chain threes that we did at the beginning. So that's my chain one, chain two, that's my chain three. I'm going to go into the top of it and I'm going to slip stitch. And that is your second round all done as well. Now, to start our next round, we chain three. We do this for every round. And then you turn your work. Now, wherever your chain is attached, you're going to start working in that space. So in the previous round, our chain was attached here. So we started working over here. But this time, our chain is attached to this space. So that's where we're going to work here. Since the rounds are going to be a bit different now, you're going to be repeating the same pattern that we were doing in all of the corners, but in these spaces over here, the spaces that are not corners, you're just going to insert one cluster. So your chain three counts as your first double crochet. So you're just gonna do two more double crochets in that same space. And that's it. That's what you do in all of the spaces that are not corners. Once you're done, you're gonna chain one so that you can work into the next space. And because the next space is a corner, you're going to do cluster, chain two, and cluster all in the same place. And when you're done, you're going to chain one so that you can work into the next space. Since the next space is not a corner, you're just going to insert one cluster in there. Once you're done with the chain one, the next space is a corner, so it works the same as like the corners of a square. So you're going to go into it, you're going to do cluster, chain two, and cluster, and all in the same space. When you're done, we're going to chain one. We're going to go into the next space. Since the next space is not a corner, we're just going to insert one cluster. When you're done, you chain one, and now we've reached our other corner. So your corner is always going to be the space that is attached to two clusters together. If it's hard for you to figure out which one is the corner, just look for the space that has two clusters in the same space. So you can see that these two clusters are in the same space. So the space over here on top of them is going to be your corner. But for example, this one over here, it's just a space. It doesn't have any two clusters in the same place. So that means over here, you're just going to put one cluster. It's a bit confusing if this is your first time doing this kind of granny square, but you will get the hang of it. And there you go. There is your next round as well. So for the granny square, keep doing rounds until your granny square can fit around this with the book that you want to make it for. So my book is slightly smaller, so I didn't have to do that many rounds. So wrap it over here and then wrap the sides together as well, making sure that this part's going a little bit up. And then make sure that the flap closes like that around your book. And this is where we're going to be attaching your heart and then we're going to be joining these two pieces together to close the envelope like that okay, and then just marking the places where you should join your two pieces together this is going to help you just keep track of 
the shape and size of your book sleeve so that everything stays nice and aligned. So this was where I was where I ended my last round of the granny square. You're just going to continue from your slip stitch. So when you slip stitch to join it, to basically end your last round, that's where you're going to start this next step from. So just hold on to your piece, align everything, make sure it's nice and straight. You don't want to accidentally go into the wrong stitch. And then you're going to take your hook and you're going to insert it through the other piece like that. And then you're going to slip stitch to join like that. So now these two are joined together. Now you can turn your work this way and you're going to be joining these two pieces together. So I'm going to go through one of the stitches on this piece and then one of the stitches on the other piece and just slip stitch but basically you go through both of the pieces make sure you're going through the stitch and then you slip stitch like that and you're going to do this to join it up until here when you're done you can fasten off so i like to fasten off by chaining two i cut my yarn and pull and tighten and now we're going to repeat these same steps on the other side and you get this really nice little border that adds to like that envelope look. On the other side you're going to be doing the same thing that you did over here. You're just going to be slip stitching it. I'm going to show you really quickly how to attach your yarn because it's a little bit different because this side was already attached. But basically to attach your yarn you insert your hook through both the pieces your hook through both the pieces and then get the yarn that you're working with make a little loop with it like that slide it through and then you're just going to chain one just to attach everything in place you don't have to chain one again so you're just going to chain one and then pull this tight and now you can just join the two pieces together so you go through both of the pieces and then you slip stitch and you're going to do this all the way over here so for this book sleeve i decided to attach the heart over here on the flap because i didn't want to add a titch button so what i'm going to do is i've left the ends as well whenever i want to close this up since there are holes i'm just going to slide these ends through the holes and like pull to tighten and this way you don't have to attach anything and it just goes on and off like that and you also you can tuck this triangle part at the top inside to give it more of like that envelope shape starting with the body of the bag you're going to be making a slip knot just a regular slip knot and then you're going to chain the length that you want for your bag so start chaining So make it as long as you want for the body of the bag, but do make it a little bit smaller because we're going to be doing some increases on the side that will increase the size of your bag just a little bit. Once you've got the length that you want, you're going to skip the first chain and you're going to insert a single crochet into the second chain from your hook. And now you're going to go into every chain and just insert one single crochet, or if you're using a different stitch, then you would insert that stitch. And you're going to do this until you reach the very end of this row. So I'm so sorry I forgot to show how to single crochet. You basically insert your hook into the chain and then you pull up a loop and you yarn over and pull through both loops. And that is how you single crochet. Now it's completely normal for your work to curl like this. Just straighten it out and after you do a few more rounds it's going to stop curling. So please don't be worried and just keep working. I've inserted one single crochet into the very last chain. Now here's the tricky part that I think that some people get confused it with. You just have to turn this around like that until you're facing the bottom half of the chain. And now you're going to be starting your next row on the bottom side of the chains rather than on top of your stitches like you usually do. So we're going to start by inserting our hook into that same chain where we just did our last single crochet. We're going to go into it and we're going to insert two more single crochets so one and in that same place another single crochet so that means that there's a total of three single crochets in our very last chain and now you're going to go into every chain 
along this side of the row and just insert one single crochet and what I'm doing right now is I'm just working over the end over here so just keep your end flat against your work and you can work over it so you don't have to weave it in later and that's it you just go into every chain and you insert one single crochet so this is what it should look like once you've started going down this is your first stitch that you did of the row and that is your chain one sorry about that and so this over here is your very last chain and in that very last chain you can see that you have this very first single crochet that you did so in that same place in that same chain you're going to go into it and you're going to be inserting two more single crochets so just like what we did over here we're just going to repeat it to make the curve oh so sorry that wasn't my last chain this is my last chain over there so in the very last chain i'm going to be inserting two single crochets one and two and that's it now we have our base ready and what we're going to do next is we're just going to go into every single stitch all around inserting one single crochet in each stitch and you don't have to do anything else you're just going to keep going round and round and round and you're going to see that your piece will get bigger and bigger and it's completely normal for it to curl at first like this but then eventually as you do more rounds it's going to become flat so don't worry about it look i did my row starting from here i just went all the way over here inserting one single crochet in each stitch and now i'm at the curve so another mistake that people make here is that they skip this or they miss this stitch over here so if you notice that your piece is getting smaller and smaller it could be because you're accidentally missing stitches so the pattern is really easy to follow but if you accidentally miss stitches or do more than one stitch in one place then you're going to get like a wonky shape and it's not going to work out but if you keep inserting just one single crochet in each stitch your piece is going to start building on itself and you're going to get the body of your bag so i've done a few more rounds and as you can see all i do is just insert one single crochet in each of these stitches and it starts building and at first it's going to curl like this that's completely normal eventually as you do more rows it's going to flatten itself out when you're done and you have the size that you want for the body of the bag you're just going to stop at one of the edges it doesn't matter where you stop it's completely up to you as long as it's near the edge and then in the next stitch that you have to work and instead of single crocheting you're just going to slip stitch like that and then you're going to fasten off to end your work so the way that I like to fasten off is I'm just going to chain two I'm going to get my scissor and cut pull and tighten and that is the end of the body of your bag there are many different ways to do the strap and you can do it however you like but the way that I'm going to do it um, I'm going to be starting with a long chain that gives me the size of my strap. I'm going to slip stitch, start my row of single crochets, go all the way back along the chain, and then do one more row along the chain. So this method, I used it in one of my other tutorials, and it gave me a really sturdy strap rather than one that's like super stretchy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some bobby pins, and I've just marked um, the place where I want my strap to start and where I want it to end. I'm going to start by inserting my hook into the stitch where I want the strap to start and then I'm going to get the color that, I'm, that I want to use. I'm using light pink and you're going to make a little loop with it like that and you're going to slide the loop through the stitch where you want to attach your strap and now you're just going to chain the length that you want your strap to be. So this is completely up to you. Make sure that your chains are not too loose, so make them a little bit tight. Once you're done and your chain is as long as you want it to be, you're going to be slip stitching it back into that stitch where you want your strap to be joined. So make sure that your chain is straightened out. Make sure it's not curled. So just straighten it. Make sure your hook is straight. And then take your hook and insert it into the stitch where you want your strap to join. And now you're going to slip stitch to connect, so pull it through and through like that. And now your strap is attached to your bag. Now you're going to be going to the stitch that is next to the place where you just slip stitch. And you're going to slip stitch in there as well. And now you're going to be turning your work, well, turning it as much as you can. 
and we're going to be starting so turn it this way and now you're going to be working into your chains so you're going to be inserting one single crochet into every chain and this is what builds the width of your strap so when I slip stitched, the backs of my chains became like the place where I'm going to be working in. So this is what the backs of your chains look like. That's what the front of your chains would look like. When you're working to the back of your chain, you're going to insert your hook here, just like that, and slip stitch. Sorry, single crochet, not slip stitch. Once you're done, this is what it should look like. I've got a single crochet in each chain. So I started from there and now I'm all the way over here and I just inserted my, um, my hook into the next stitch that I wanna attach it to. So that's just my chain. I've gone into the next stitch and I'm gonna slip stitch to join this over here like that. And then to start my next row or whenever you wanna start a next row, before you go back along your strap, you always have to slip stitch into the stitch that's next to the one you just went into. So I slip stitched. And then once you've done that, you're going to turn your work. I just want to make sure that it's clear in case you want to do more rows than me. Also make sure that your strap is completely straight and not twisting. So make sure it's like aligned and not like all twirled up like that when you slip stitch. Make sure everything stays nice and aligned. And once you've turned your work and you've slip stitched in both the stitches, you just go into every stitch one more time and you just single crochet to start the next row for your straps. So that's what I'm doing over here. I'm just gonna be single crocheting into every stitch. Once I'm done, this is what my strap looks like. I'm all the way back over here. And now to end my strap, I'm just going to slip stitch and fasten off if you want to make your strap even thicker then you would just keep doing rows and rows with the technique that i showed you until you have the size that you want but if you're ready to finish it off like i am you're just going to fasten it off and to do that you just chain two and then you get your scissors and you cut pull and tighten I'm going to start by making the triangle flap for the envelope or love letter shape and what you're going to do is you're going to turn to the back of your bag so just decide which side you want to be the front so i want this side to be the front i just like how the straps fold inwards or show over here so i'm going to make this the front and this is going to be the back i'm just going to look at the edge over here and you're going to insert your hook not over here so not the stitch that's very close to your strap, maybe one that's like next to your strap over here. This is just so that when you close your bag, it doesn't bunch up over the strap. So I'm going to be starting from here. Insert your hook, make a little loop with your yarn like that, and then you're going to slide it through. This is just you attaching your yarn to your bag so that you can start the triangle piece. And now you're going to chain one. And in that same place where you just attached your yarn, you're going to be inserting your single crochet. And now you're going to be single crocheting into every stitch until the other side of your bag. So go into every stitch and single crochet. Once you've made it to the other side of the body of your bag, you're going to be starting another row. So what I like to do to start another row is just to chain one and then turn my work. And now I'm going to ignore the chain one. I'm going to work it to the first stitch over here. Some people don't chain one to get a neater edge, but I find it easier to chain one and then complete my work. And now I'm just going to single crochet in each of the stitches back down the row. And I'm going to be doing two to four rows of just regular single crochets just to build some length here. So that when I fold it, it covers this top part over here. If we start making the triangle flap from here, then what's going to happen is that the flap, it's going to leave like a little gap here. So I just like making a few regular rows just to cover the space. And I did three more rows just to build some length. And now we're going to be giving it that triangle shape. And to get that shape, what we do is we basically do a decrease on both corners. 
So that means we're going to do a decrease here and then one single crochet in each stitch until we have two stitches left and then we're going to decrease there as well. So I'm going to show you how to decrease. You're going to start a new row like normal where you chain one and then you turn your work. But instead of working into the first stitch like you would, you're going to skip the first stitch and go into the second stitch. And that is how you decrease. You're basically decreasing the number, the total number of stitches in a row by two. So we skipped that one and then we went into the other one making a decrease. And now we're just going to insert one single crochet in every stitch, just like normal, until we have two stitches left at the end over here. I'm at the end of the row and I've got two stitches left and now I'm going to make a decrease. That means I'm just going to skip this and go into the next one. I also want to say that there are many different ways to decrease. This is the way that I like to do it, but there's also ways where you can single crochet two together. Um, so of course, go with whatever you're comfortable with. So there we go. Now I'm going to chain one. We're going to start our new row. And at the start of every row, we do a decrease. At the end of every row, we do a decrease. So over here, I'm going to skip, go into the next one over here to make my decrease. And I'm just going to single crochet in each stitch until I have two stitches left. I'm at the end of the row once again, and I've got two stitches left. So I'm going to skip one and I'm going to go into the next one. And this is how you're just going to do all of your rows until you only have two stitches left in the row. And you're going to see that this shape is just going to keep decreasing inwards, making sort of like the triangle shape that we're going for. So one more time, skip, go into the next one to make your decrease. And just one single crochet in each stitch. So decrease at the start and decrease at the end of each row. I've reached the end of my flap. I only have two stitches left to work into. So I'm going to be doing my last single crochet. I'm just chaining one and I turned my work. I'm going to skip this. I'm going to single crochet into the next one, the very last one that and this just makes like the little point for your triangle and now I'm just going to fasten off I'm going to chain two and then I'm going to get my scissor and cut and pull and tighten it so this is what my finished bag looks like after I finished attaching the hearts and I also added titch buttons so I can open and close my bag comfortably and there we go